Hello and welcome to this week's Australian Share Market Report. I'm Dale Gillam, Chief Analyst at Wealth Within. This week I'll be talking about takeovers, miners, West Farmers and the best sectors, along with giving you my views on the All Lord News Index and stocks of interest for this week. Now before I get started, subscribe to the channel now. And remember to click that like button just below. Also remember to get onto the Wealth Within live stream every Tuesday, 7 to 8 p.m. Australian Eastern Time. So let's get into things. Takeovers were the hot topic in the past week, with Wes Farmers proposing a $1.5 billion takeover bid for Rare Earth Miner Linus Corporation, or LYC stock ticket code. Now this unsolicited cash offer to purchase liner stock at $2.25 per share was made at a massive 44.7% premium on the share price at the time of the announcement. What was interesting was that the Linus board rejected the offer from Wes Farmers due to the conditional aspects of their proposal. Now the Linus board also have a belief that the company can deliver better value for its shareholders. Even more interesting was that just prior to the announcement, liner shares were falling and were down 8.5% for March. On news of the takeover, liner shares jumped 38% on market open on Tuesday the 26th of March, rising to a high of $2.17 before closing slightly lower for the day. Now the troubled miners processing plant faces closure in September if the company cannot come to an agreement with the Malaysian government about toxic waste removal from its operations. As a consequence of this, liner shares have been falling most of the past year and were down around 45% from its high in May last year. And this severe fall has made it a more attractive takeover target. Hence, the interest from Wes Farmers. The move by Wes Farmers is timely given the huge fall in the liner share price and is in line with Wes Farmers' objective to acquire businesses with unique characteristics that will deliver value to its shareholders. All that said, if you own liner shares, the question you have is, do you hold or sell? And if you don't own them, what should you do? Takeover bids are always interesting, and what you do changes depending on the situation. Now, Linus closed at $2.09 last week, just below the offer price. And so to me right now, there is no value in buying Linus unless you believe West Farmers will significantly up its bid, which may or may not happen anytime soon. If you own Linus shares, then you can treat this one of three ways. If you think a second higher bid will come from West Farmers, then sit back and wait. That said, I would not bank on the bid being too much higher than the current one. And so you might be wasting your time here attempting to gain a few extra percent. If you're long term in your thinking, then you may wish to have Wes Farmers in your portfolio. So sit back and watch the show. Lastly, you may think that now is a chance to exit the troubled line of shares at a much better price. In another big move, Challenger Limited jumped 10% on news that it will receive extended funding for reinsurance-based products from Japanese insurance group MSNAD. The Japanese group also intends to acquire a position on the board and increase its 15% stake in Challenger. Now, this increase in their stake could lead to an acquisition sometime down the track. Challenger is another stock that has fallen heavily the past year or so and was down around 50% prior to the announcement. Right now, it is a bit too early to tell the longer term ramifications of the move by MSNAD. However, it would be wise to keep an eye on Challenger for an opportunity. Shares in IPH Limited rose around 4% this week after the ACCC stated that it would not oppose the takeover of a smaller competitor, Zenith. Now it is a bit too late to look at OPH for your portfolio, but keep it on your watch list. Taking a look at the sectors, communication services and materials were up around 1.4% last week, with Fortescue being the big mover here, up nearly 8%. At the other end of the scale, energy was down around 4% and information technology down around 3%. And these two sectors I still remain bullish on. Financials have continued to slide down and at one stage were down around 2% before rising slightly to the end of last week, down just over 0.5%. Again, I'm suggesting this sector is a wait and see. 
In the past month, we have seen the big four all fall, with ANZ the hardest hit down around 7%, with CBA down around 4.5%. Now, AMP also continued its downward spiral, with it now down around 11% for the month. AMP achieved a new all time low on Thursday, the 28th of March, at $2.07. Given this, now is not the time to bottom pick because you think it is a cheap stock. This stock is bearish, and the market is not showing any signs of supporting its current share price, and so it's best to stay clear until we see something far more positive occur. While the financial sector rose after the Royal Commission report was released, with investors hopeful the run would continue, we are now starting to see the dust settle and the sector is still not looking all that strong. Therefore, I still believe this sector should be avoided in the short term and that investors wait until the second half of the year when the banks are likely to perform better. Let's bring up the charts now and take a look at the All Ordinaries Index and our stocks of interest for this week. Please remember that this report is an educational tool and as such, your personal circumstances have not been considered in the analysis of the compilation of shares included. The content of this report cannot be considered personal financial advice. If you have not done so before, pause the video and read the disclaimer on screen. We hope that you enjoy this week's report. Alrighty, this week we've had a, a few stocks from people sent in and a couple of other comments that I'd actually have a read first. So I'll just put my glasses on. Um, and uh, we've got uh, Michael Abbott. He said, hi, Dale, your book arrived today already halfway through. Great read and I'm getting a lot of value out of it. Thanks again. He said, hi, Dale, just finished the video and I'm assuming uh, you mean obviously, obviously this uh, a market report video. Maybe it's our live uh, live uh, stream that we do every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. So get on there if you haven't done that before. Um, would love your feedback on West Farmer. So we're going to look at that in a second. Um, they have been performing well. Fundamentals look good, along with the forecast of opening 40 new budding stores um, a year. I currently hold, however, looking at the possibility of adding to my position. Currently, Wes only makes up around 10% of my portfolio, so it's not breaking one of the golden rules by adding. Appreciate your time I put into these videos. Now, obviously it's 10% of Michael's um, portfolio at this point in time. That's fine. You don't need to add to that. Really, when we're talking about adding to positions, when you're looking at it, if you're a buy and hold person, you don't need to add to positions. When you're adding to positions, all too often people add at the wrong times. You need to make sure the stock is strong and, and it, it can only prove to it's strong when it comes on down. And that sounds a bit backwards, but you really do need to add when you're in strength and also be careful how you add because let's say that you have $10,000 in in a position and then you add another $10,000. Every dollar that 10, 000, uh, that position drops from the second position, you're losing a dollar for dollar if it does drop away. And, and sometimes you'll find people, I, I, sorry, I often find people add after the stock's been rising for quite a while, thinking they'll make even more money. And what they're doing is they're buying at the end of the run. So if you're more buy and hold, just hang on to that 10%. Don't change that. And when you sell, then you slowly compound your returns by adding um, adding more to the current, the new stocks that you've got. So you're keeping a 10% waiting. Remember in my book, I talk about eight to 12 stocks in your portfolio. So it's all perfect right now, but we will look at um, Wes Farmers in a second. But before I do, I'll just read up a couple of the other questions um, I've got got um, um, Annie Mars, new to the channel. So hi, Annie. Thank you for coming to the channel and, and making some comments. She said, I'm educating myself playing the ASX share market game. The ASX share market game they run, I think it's about every quarter they do it. It's free to do it. Um, they give you uh, a portfolio, a mock portfolio, or mock um, money to trade. It's a really good place to play and fine tune your skills and practice what you're doing in a simulated market environment. It's not the place you actually learn. I mean, obviously learning is different. That's where you'll learn from my book or our courses, but a really, really good place to go. So if you're not sure what you're doing and you want to, you know, really practice your skills and get on the ASX game, it is a really good place to, to go. Um, and he's asking me to look at Bank of Queensland. We will do all of that as well. Um, I've got Mike Richardson. He says, hi, Dale, what's your thought on CBA and ANZ over the next few years? So I'll bring up the bank. So we've got Bank of Queensland, ANZ, CBA. So we will do that, guys. Um, then I've got Jean Carlo Fioli. She says, hi there. Thanks for the video. My pleasure and welcome to the channel. I'm glad you're finding it valuable. It's got some um, hi there for the video. I'm willing to learn stock investment on any advice on where I can actually learn how to read the charts. It's 
uh, regards Jean. Uh, Jean, it, or I think it's Jean, it, it might be Jean. I uh, can't remember. It's not quite... Uh, clear to me whether you're male or female uh, that's okay hopefully i've said it right um the best place to go and learn about stock market and charting and analysis technical analysis is right here it's it's in our courses and in, in my book all too often people think just like learning how to read a chart that they're going to all, uh, all of a sudden magically make themselves into a trader it's about process structure and strategy not just reading you know reading a book on candlesticks or reversal can uh, or reversal patterns or indicators people do that all the time and you can get all this information free on the web and yet most people trading the market don't do very well in fact the, the statistics are 90 percent fail because they don't have a structure and a strategy and a process that's what we teach in our course along with all the tools and how you read them properly because reading just learning to read a chart a bar chart is only part of the process and um, from that point of view so let's go and have a look at the stock so we'll switch switch into now in looking at the market so what i'm going to do now is look at the all ordinaries index now you can see here on the screen right now i've got a monthly chart of the all ordinaries index and i'm going to switch over to the weekly chart shortly but you can see here how it's been really, really bullish since that low back in 2009, March 2009. And then you've got the previous over there on the left there, the previous all-time high. So we are getting close to our all-time high in the market that was prior to the GFC. So you can see there in November 2007, and we did the big move down where our market fell over 50%. There's the more recent high there in August 2018 there. So you can see that recent high and we are getting close. But look at the bar for last month. If we look at that, you can see here, here's March, the bar for March. Um, if I bring it up there. So you can see the open and close are very, very close together. This is sharing, showing indecision. So this is showing, th there's a lot of resistance up around this level on our marketplace. So it wouldn't surprise me uh, to see a bit of a move down for a month or two through here, but it may not actually happen. The market is surprisingly um, holding up quite well, even though there's a lot of things going on at the moment, suggesting it should be falling, but it does look quite good. But that that kind of bar says indecision, especially after this huge, strong move through here. And if I go down to the weekly, you'll see how it's just starting to fall over. These one, two, three, four weeks there, not a lot of difference between the opens and closes all the way through there. So it's slowing down for some reason. Um, and now I'm not saying it's not going to push through and break through that previous high there. Um, but at this point in time, I think we need to look at maybe um, consider the fact that April may be a down month for us. Remember, I was expecting, if you look at last year's report, you know, I was expecting a high March, April, May. So we could be in there before a bit of a pullback. If we do have a pullback, it'll be some, anywhere between 2 and 8% roughly. Um, we'll probably come down to around that $6,000 mark there. But at this point in time, look, just sit back and wait. No, I wouldn't take new buying positions at the moment until we understand the direction, whether it's going to go up or whether it's going to come down. So let's now go into the stocks. I'll just bring up my stocks there, there wherever I put them in a workbook there. So uh, I don't want to save that. So let's move on to the stocks. The first one is, where is it? Where's Farmers? I think that's the first one I've got in here. Having a look at Wes Farmers, this is a great stock. If you're a buy and hold type of person, Wes Farmers is the stock for you. It's one of those stocks, if you look over there on the left, it just keeps running up and you can see the beautiful move since uh, back in 2009. And if you look at that, you can see here how, I'll just bring it up there so you can see it. You can see here that the, the all-time high of this stock was more recently. So it's outperformed the market. So it's all-time high as August last year. Um, it's come back a little bit, which is a nice place to get it a little bit cheaper. But they are looking really, really nice after a big sideways move through here uh, between uh, January, sorry, between 2012 and 2000. And what's that, 2018? It's looking nice. It's looking like it'll go through that previous all-time high. I like the stock at this point in time. So it is very, very good. So I would agree with uh, Michael saying it's good fundamentally. It does look really good, but I wouldn't add to my position at the moment. That's my only um uh, criteria on that. Bank of Queensland and a bank and have a look at this. This is quite bearish at this point in time. It, it's not looking as good. Um, sorry about that, Annie. Uh, it's not something that I think it's. It is bullish. A lot of the banks I'm not really bullish on. If uh, in, I'm actually more bearish on the segment uh, on this sector. Sorry, if I can just open that chart up. Come on, click on the right thing. Open the chart up. You can see here it's been falling away for quite some time. There, there's a higher. Back in November 2017, I'd need to see it finding some support. I'm not suggesting it won't, but if we can keep a high 
the price above that level there, that $8.70 level. If this move down doesn't go below that and starts to move up, then that would start changing my position on this stock to say, yes, it's likely to start moving up. But right now, I'd be staying right out of this stock and sitting back and waiting. Um, if you're in the stock, then you know you should have been out of this a long, long, long time ago. As you can see here, if I keep going back, it's all-time high. I was way back over here back in March 2015, like a lot of the other big four banks were all February, uh, March, April. They had their highs back then as well. Let's look at CBA. CBA, as I mentioned in the report, is down um, more recently. So you can see the last few weeks has been trading down. Like this, is a, a, this is a sign, an interesting one. It could be a sign of indecision. Maybe it stopped falling. Um, uh, well, this bar is an indication that maybe it stopped falling. We'll see what happens this week or the next couple of weeks on this. But right now, I'd be staying right out of banks. Uh, I'll be waiting. Now, it does pay good dividends. That's great. But if you're losing more in the capital gain, if you're more buy and hold, then it's not so bad. But you know, buy and hold, again, March 2015, if I put my little tool on here, where's my tool? Um, there we go. If I put my tool on from the all-time high, down to there, you can see the massive move that this thing had over 32%, and currently it's still down 26% from 2015. So why would you hang on to a stock to collect a dividend when you could have been in something else like BHP, Rio, Fortescue, Cochlear, CSL? There's a few great stocks that have, have taken off like a rocket in those times. You would have compounded better returns by getting out of the banks here. Let's go to ANZ, and there's another one I mentioned in my report. Again, down over the last few weeks, nice heavy move down. Um, again, quite interesting, opened up near its high. And if I just stretch that out, you'll see here it opened there, traded right down, came back. So I'm not discounting that they might have an up week this week or might start a move up. But again, still too early to tell whether it's finished its downward run because, again, it's been looking bearish as well. Now, they're the four stocks that I was looking at, as I said. So the banks to me, finance, uh, as I mentioned in the report, AMP, stay out of that at the moment. Don't try and bottom pick. If you try and bottom pip, you're going to get pipped all the time or most of the time trying to pick up a cheap stock. They're not necessarily cheap if they're continually falling away. Always, always buy stocks that are rising and not falling. And right now, um, outside of West Farmers, these banks uh, and in finance companies, most of them are falling away, so stay out of those. But that's it for me this week. Good luck, good trading.